Welcome back to City Line. Well, as you can tell, I have a quattro of intelligence here with me um, to talk about the intersections of domestic violence and commercial sexual exploitation. Please join me in welcoming Nadia Van Adder. You are a victim service supervisor for the wonderful Crystal Judson Family Justice Center. Welcome back, my dear. Thank you. It's good to be back, Amanda. It's good to see you. Even if I can't see your feet, I can see those dangly earrings and they make me happy. Um, you brought some amazing colleagues with you. Christina Lee, you are the Executive Director, Rebuilding Hope Sexual Assault Center for Pierce County. Welcome, my dear. Hey, Amanda. Thank you for having me. I'm actually the interim executive director. Well, that's true. Thank you for saying that because um, we know that Carlin will be back quicker than we can say Bob's your uncle. Um, yes. So thank you for stepping in and keeping all that goodness going. That's not an easy uh, situation, so I really appreciate your service. Um, let's see here. We have Kai Robinson. Hello there, Miss Kai. Hi, thank you. I'm from our sister's house, and I'm the victim specialist supervisor. It's great to be here today. It's great to have you here. And last but surely not least is Kyra Dobeck. You are the executive director of Washington Trafficking Prevention. Welcome, Kyra. Hi, Amanda. Kira Dobeck with Washington Trafficking Prevention. So great to be here today. For some reason, you know, I got your name right when I introduced you, but now it's like left my head. Oh, I'm so sorry. So, Nadia, let's start out with you. Um, what is the Pierce County Commercial Sexual Exploitation, otherwise known as CSE, if we give it like a little acronym there, co um, collaborative? What is this all about? So the collaborative came to life because all of our programs already work with survivors of commercial sexual exploitation. And we recognize that a holistic coordinated response that supports community education and outreach, direct support for survivors and professional collaboration, which breaks down silos and supports a no wrong door approach is not just important, but it's necessary if we as a community want to truly address commercial sexual exploitation. This collaborative was birthed from the desire and recognition of all of our programs to, to do this work in a meaningful way to amplify the work we do so we can better support survivors in our community. Um, I love that you said <clears throat> no wrong door approach. That stuck in my head immediately. And I thought with the four of you, <clears throat> there could be no wrong door given how you sit in your organizations, but also what you see every single day in terms of barriers. It's like you are the no, no wrong door warriors, <laughs> for a better term. So, um, Kira, how big is this problem locally? You know, we, we're aware of the evening news. We know that we have an unhoused issue that is just bursting at the seams. How big is this issue for us in Pierce County? Absolutely. Well, the thing is, is that it's really hard to get good numbers on specifically commercial sexual exploitation. So, you know, uh, the Boyer report from 2019 said that we have on average two to 3,000 young people that are trafficked for sex every year in Washington state. Um, but what we know is that during the pandemic that child luring increased 99% in the United States last year. And then in King County or neighboring county, we saw an increase of 167.5%. And so that could put us throughout Washington between, you know, 3,000 to just over 5,000 kids that were exploited last year. And the truth is, is that those primary risk factors that we see for, you know, commercial sex and um, the exploitive nature of it, um, you know, truancy, not going to school, social isolation, poverty, domestic violence in the home. We know domestic violence increased a whole bunch last year in Washington state and around the nation and around the world. Um, people using drugs and alcohol to cope, feel better. Um, houselessness and increased online activity are all primary risk factors to begin with. And those are all things that increased last year and throughout this year. Oh my goodness, boy, that is, yeah, that is a huge problem. So Kai, tell us about the partnership between the program 
between the program and, collabor and collaboration, why are these partnerships so important? Yes, so Washington Trafficking Prevention, Family Justice Center, Rebuilding Hope, and Our Sister's House have all came together to address, intervene, and educate our community on commercial sexual exploitation. Each of our organizations have been working independently to assess women and youth impacted by sexual violence, domestic violence, and human trafficking. And as this partnership is important because each organization has different resources and skills, it makes sense that we all pull our resources and expertise together so we can have a bigger and more significant impact on our community. So, so well said, because I, I can remember years ago, Kai, when um, I can remember before Crystal Jetson Family Justice Center was in Tacoma, and people who were victims of this had to jump around to five, six, seven, eight different businesses just to get themselves safe. Um, and that one-stop safe umbrella is so important. And it's even more important to find other organizations to bring underneath that umbrella as well. So Christina, based upon that, why is it important to recognize exploitation as a county-wide issue? Why couldn't we just say, oh, it's, 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 it's the South End, it's the East Side, it's North Tacoma? Well, Amanda, that's a great question. All of our agencies are getting clients referred from every pocket, every corner of Pierce County. It's not just the large cities like Tacoma, Puyallup. We're getting clients from Eatonville, Lakewood, Yelm, Banaway, Fife. It's all over Pierce County and it's happening in every neighborhood. And we have a huge issue with um, sex trafficking involving recruitment and ex sexual exploitation at a broad range of locations, including street-based um, prostitution and tracks, which I'll t talk a little bit about. Um, hotels, private residences, schools, malls, and bus stops where um, our youth frequently hang out at. Um, our street-based tracks are very prominent in Pierce County. We have seven districts. Five out of the seven districts have at least one known and identified prostitution track, if not more. And the two districts that don't have an identified track, um, our agencies are finding that survivors are seeking services but are not able to access services because of the lacking capacity and awareness, which often leads to the misconception that commercial sexual exploitation doesn't happen there. So in total, Pierce County has um, has street-based prostitution is known to take place at least on 17 tracks throughout 10 cities and over 15 individual neighborhoods. Um, ultimately, survivors are not the only ones that are affected by exploitation. It's the secondary victims, it's their families, it's their friends, it's the community itself. Um, and in order to adequately and continuously educate relevant professionals within our community to improve awareness, to be able to identify signs and risks, respond to and coordinate to clients, needed intensive case management services among providers, Pierce County must increase the capacity of its current programming. Therefore, these programs need to be robustly funded. So, so when, when I, and I, I, as you're saying all of these incredible statistics, I'm thinking, you keep saying youth, and I keep thinking youth. Give, give me an age range, Christina. What are we looking at? Because I really want people to understand that, that this is not just 19-year-olds. I mean, if we want to talk about youth. So what ages are we talking about, Christina? You know, it's, it's a huge range. It can be as young as six, seven, um, exploitation happens in many different forms. I mean, and, you know, youth is 18, up to 18, 19, early 20s, you know, that's still yeah. a young age. And so it's, it's, it's very huge range of our youth. Thank you for that. I think that gives our viewers an idea of that it's, it's, it's widespread. It's not just what you would like to see that they show in the movies. Um, so um, Kira, what are some of the trends around CSE that have been seen during COVID? Because COVID puts a whole different hat on this. It absolutely does. We're seeing a lot of young people that just don't have access to their normal supports. Um, you know, and to kind of like piggyback off of your, your previous question, you know, the, the average age that somebody is first exploited in Washington state is about 14.4 years old, which means that it's happening to infants 
and it's happening to people all the way, you know, of all age ranges, right? But the average age is like a seventh grader. And so I think that, you know, trend-wise, what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of young people with unmet needs, and this is a supply and demand issue, right? And so um, commercial sexual exploitation of children and adults happens because people purchase sex. That's the whole reason why. So we need to address the demand for commercial sex as well when we're in, the, when we're in these spaces. And that's why prevention is so important. Um, but what we're seeing is, again, there's just a lot of unmet needs and a lot of folks in the community that need more support. And I think that's why it's so important that we're here today is so that people can understand like what supports are available to them. So this is, and that's so well said, because I want to shift it now to Nadia, Kai, and Christina, because you are in direct service. And let's start with Nadia first. How have your programs changed during COVID? I mean, we had to pivot to remote care, and that really made us be more innovative, and it really made us rely even more on our partnerships so that we can continue to provide a high level of services for, for survivors in our community. And Kai, how has it changed your uh, direct service? Yes, as Nadia, we did have to go remote as well. So most of our programs did go online, but this also gave us an opportunity to better support our clients as we um, had different funding coming in that allowed us to um, actually help with some rental assistance to our clients. Excellent. And Christina? And that's the same with Rebuilding Hope. We just we went remote. Um, engaging with clients um, via telephone, video chat, social media. Um, and it has definitely made engaging with our clients more challenging. Um, building a relationship is the best intervention. Um, and so not being able to meet in person, especially with our youth, really disrupts that um, relationship building and creates barriers to building trust and rapport. Um, so, but we've been able to creatively think outside the box and be able to um, serve our clients. Mm, I love that. I mean, with all of you here on this phone call, um, I can't imagine a barrier that you wouldn't break through to reach somebody and to help them. Um, Nadia and Christina, this next month coming up is Domestic Violence Action Month. What is the connection between domestic violence and CSE? And Christina, why don't you go first? Yeah, um, so individuals experiencing commercial sexual exploitation, they're experiencing multiple, multiple forms of violence. It's not just sexual violence. There's intersectionality between the history of child abuse and being very groomed at a very young age. You know, Traffickers um, utilize exploitation as another tool for power and control. And oftentimes um, the relationship with the trafficker is also considered domestic violence, a domestic violence relationship. Um, so there are different kinds of trafficking that could look like, um, that's, that could be family-based, that's exploiting family members um, for basic needs such as rent, um, food. Um, that could be um, a trafficking relationship, or not relationship, a traf um, trafficker could begin a re what is considered a loving relationship um, and then encourage their partner to do sex, sexual acts for that partner's benefit. So there's mm. different layers and intersectionality between all the um, forms of violence. What would you add to that, Nadia? I mean, similar to what Christina said, there's so many different layers to it. And we know when someone is victimized in one area, it may make, put them at higher risk of being trafficked. And so having an action month just gives us a way to really tie all of these parts together and, and show, show the community how these really do intersect. Absolutely. So Kai, what actions can people take next month to support survivors and your programs? So next month, is it, as it is DV Awareness Month, our sister's house is actually planning a car parade during Domestic Violence Awareness Month, as it is to bring honor, memorizing, and acknowledging those who have been impacted by current domestic violence. The parade will also include signs of our current programs, just 
um, having people there who have been there to show, um, just to show what they have been through. And then we will also be selling masks and bandanas to raise money for basic needs for our survivors. So please just look out for our social media accounts on our Instagram and Facebook at Our Sister's House, where we'll be having more information and ways for people to get involved. Beautiful. And last but not least, um, Kira, how can people access the programs in Pierce County CSE Collective? So anytime that you contact any of our agencies, if you do want a connection with one of the agencies that's here, we will, of course, refer out. We have a very strong cross-referral. We want to make sure that nobody is missed, that nobody's left behind. And so I think that that's really important. But our sister's house can be found at oursistershouse.com. Um, their phone number is 253-383-4275. Um, Crystal Judson Family Justice Center has a um, helpline, a domestic violence helpline, but you can also get uh, CSE services through there. And again, there's lots of folks out there who don't identify as trafficking victims. If you've ever been in the life or done any sort of uh, commercial sex, webcamming, anything, you are eligible for services. And so we just want to make sure that you know what's available to you. We're here to support. Um, they can be reached at 253-798-4166. And then Rebuilding Hope also has a hotline. Um, it's 1-800-756-7273. Mm -hmm. um, you can find us online. <laughs> Thank you so, so very much, all four of you, for being here today and taking time out of your busy schedule. And um, also, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for standing in the void and changing. Um, this is happening generationally. It's happening friend to friend, family member to family member. So I thank you so much for uh, recognizing what we need and then making it easy to access. Thank you so much. Well, that wraps up another great segment of City Line. It's always a pleasure and a privilege to be in your home. We've given you some great things to think about in this past hour. So please go out there and please, above all, get your vaccination, wear your mask. And when you come back, as always, I'll be waiting for you right here at City Line. Take care. Bye.